I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this is going to be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. The trail has been committed. Hit you with the bad hydrogen. Yeah. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my nip. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of reason. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. That intro, man, is crazy. I I love it. Listen, it's Friday. So you know what we're doing here on The Voice of Reason? We're turning up because it's Friday. It's the last day of the week, and we want to send you out with a bang. If this is your first time tuning in to The Voice of Reason with Zoe Williams, let me tell you who you're listening to. Crazy dude. Has a lot of information about relationships. It ain't all good. It ain't all right. Maybe not right for you, but it's right for me, goddammit. It's relationship topics that we cover. We're not afraid to talk about anything. We're on Dash Radio. Hot button radio to be more exact. A little bit more specific. Hot button is the station. It's a talk station. Many different talk shows on it. And uh, this is what we do. We try to hit you upside Joe Dome piece. With the illest relationship conversation you can deal with. And sometimes it's a little harsh. It's a little rough around the edges. But who gives two shakes of a fat rat's ass? Certainly not me. <laughs> Our ladies. Typically, we're we're in here with a room full of ladies, right? There's Whitney Tabor. There's Arana Lopez. And there have been others, right? And still may be more. I don't know. Why? Because I want to create this environment for women to be able to open up, share, you know, talk about it. Now, our phone lines have been farting around for the last couple of weeks. So I don't know what number to give. I'm going to give out two numbers. And you guys try them all. 323-230-4445. <laughs> I hate saying it that way, but now it's kind of stuck. 323-230-4445. Whitney told me to do it, and I can't get it out now. Or 844-55-1. 844-55-1. Why am I giving out the number before I give out the topic? Because you better call now, because these phone lines jam up. Okay? Topics are crazy. Today's topic is... <laughs> A woman, let me just say, a woman gave me this topic, by the way. We should bring her in here. She was the one who gave us the topic. You know, we're every every time I come here, I sit down and I say, okay, here's 40 topics. Which one should I do? And she was like, have you ever thought of doing? And it came out of her mouth. Somebody go grab her real quick. I would love for you guys to hear what this young lady offered up today and i developed a topic it from it i developed a topic right oh here she comes yeah here she comes come on in here and sit down real quick we were just saying how you inspired today's topic oh yeah and i just think it would be better coming from a woman tell us what what was the topic you asked me to put together for people today? Just po- the name itself is crazy. Post nut clarity. What? Post nut clarity. Post nut clarity. What in the feast of Sam Hain <laughs> is post nut clarity? Basically, how guys love you before sex, and then after sex they hate you. They get clarity, right? Mm-hmm. Like <gasps> post nut clarity. <laughs> That is from a woman. It's genius. Hey, where's my engineer? He's leaving. Phone lines is ringing. He's bugging. Is it? 
who came up with this? It was um, that's Veronica popping on Twitter. Really? So, yeah. So there's a hashtag, right? That hey. is post nut clarity. Yeah, I was confused at first until I clicked on the hashtag, and it was like all kinds of stuff guys were posting do about we have, how much they hate women after sex. Do we have something from from Twitter? Some of the responses of post nut yeah. clarity. All right, so we got a few that says, uh, when you look back at those DMs, you said, hashtag post nut clarity. Wow. And, more. Uh, Give me some more. The feeling of regret after you get that nut off. Why did I even do this? Post nut wow. clarity. <laughs> well, this one's my favorite. Uh, when she goes from a 10 to a 4 in 0. 0.7 seconds after you nut and she's still on top of you. <laughs> post nut clarity. Post nut clarity. <laughs> Wow, the phone lines are banging right now. If only our engineer would pay attention. <laughs> Gosh, the phone lines are jumping. This is going to be crazy. So I developed the topic. Why do I keep getting played for the women, right? A deeper look into ways women can protect themselves from a man's best. Here's the key word from a man's best behavior. Because we know how to act right. <laughs> so is it really post-nut clarity or is it mission accomplished? Wow. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the, the solution to that is just don't date. There's no way. You guys have a hot little monkey box that needs regular maintenance. You're scaring her, Zoe. Am I? Yeah. That's true. Maybe I shouldn't scare you. Jesus. But that's what's waiting on you. Anyway, Veronica Conway has joined us in the conversation. VC. Uh, what an amazing conversation for a Friday night. <laughs> Post oh nut clarity. God. Post nut clarity. <laughs> How I amazing mean, is that, right? It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's dig into this because I may have a thing with you to say. I bet. I know you do. I know you do. Listen, the number to dial is 323-230-4445. Get to your phone lines right now. 323-230-4445. Sorry, this, it gets uglier and uglier, but I just keep doing it. I don't know. Let me just say this. Can women have post-sex clarity? If men can have post-nut clarity, can women have post-fuck clarity? Meaning, oh, yeah. you wake up and look at him, or maybe not even wake up. Maybe as soon as he put the tip in, you got post fuck clarity. But for men, it doesn't really matter because if the tip is in, that's a touchdown. That's like the tip of the football crossing the end zone. Like, ah, it's the ice scored. You'd be like, this is terrible. Too late. I'm in you. <laughs> we we are one. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> you know how men are. We're very simple. Once we cross the threshold, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. <laughs> I need to know, right? How do women protect themselves from getting played? Men have been taught since kindergarten how to play women right and I'm going to tell you that's where you're going to find your most honest man is in kindergarten because he's going to tell you the truth (laughs) he's going to tell you the truth in kindergarten I love you I I gave you those Valentine's Day candy because we're going to get married (laughs) that's when he's his most honest you fuck with an 8th grader (laughs) he already (laughs) know what's happening He already know what he got to do to get you, right? And why is it that our, I would even say they're cultural, they're ritualistic. Why is it that our cultural behaviors, men's that are, why is it that they always work? Open the door, pull out the chair, pick up the tab. I'm fucking, I'm just saying, later on it's, ah. All of that worked. (laughs) You know, yes. But why does it always work? Hmm? 
The flip side of that is flossing. You put flossing on top of the right behaviors? <sighs> You're in water world, buddy. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> You're in moist, moist landia. <laughs> what kind of flossing? You know what kind of flossing. You're a woman. Tell me what sparkles attract your vision. I don't know much about flossing. Yeah, you do. When know. dudes floss, stop playing. You 24? 24. Exactly. You know exactly what I mean. Swagger doesn't look good when you're dusty. So, <laughs> <laughs> swagger and dust. You mean do, you got to be clean? More than clean, though. Take care of your hygiene. I agree. She she knows. She's trying to play games. And it's going to work tonight. Wherever club you're at, you're going to see Lord Flosston. Lord Flosston is going to show up. And you're going to be like, look at him. I just want to know why is it that these basic behaviors always work Veronica why are women susceptible to this to the to this basic you know kind of pick up it's not even pick up lines it's pick up behavior let me pick up her drink I got that for you yeah. thing <laughs> speak on it I think I think women in their core I mean women are sexual creatures too we're just undercover sexual Speak in other words, it. we keep pretending like we're not as sexual or more sexual than men are. And the truth is, is that an honest woman in reality is far more sexual, far more powerfully sexual than a man ever was and ever will be. The problem is that she doesn't usually encounter men that know how to evoke that, really. Say more. But so, so, so what she does is she drives her sexuality underground. She is stimulated sexually by men. And if you get even a little prospect of that it might have some care and some nurturing with it, then, you know, you kind of get a little slam dunk, I guess. But so, fundamentally, women are sexual. So do women tend to turn off their intuition and just go with what feels good? Sometimes, because so. you know the Absolutely. intuition is telling you this is side buster right here. This yeah. is bootleg Bobby right here. <laughs> And y'all still fall for it. Now, are you telling me women are so sexual and so horny and so thirsty for that deep, clitoral, cervical orgasm that she'll settle for Buster, no, Bobby? What I, no, what I'm, no, what I'm saying is that she is has suppressed her deep longing for that deep... Uh, cervical orgasm and she'll replace it she'll approximate it with some attention from a man in other words because women have gotten so away we've gotten so far away from our natures our real deep nature we'll settle we, we'll settle for the shadow of it so if it just looks like it has a chance to be that then we'll settle for it we settle who does more settling in intimate relationships men or women Definitely women. Let's go deeper. <laughs> Definitely women. Why are you guys masters of settling? Nah, now they quiet. Fear. <laughs> fear. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought she was going to answer. I think it's fear. Say more. Fear? What else? Fear of what? See, let me, let me, let me frame it. Let me frame <laughs> I it love like Veronica. No, She's about to no, turn no, no, out. No, no. <laughs> no I'm gonna frame, I want to frame it in a real way. So, so until I hmm, raise my standards, and I don't even mean mentally or from a decision standpoint, until I raise my vibration, had a man actually interact with me that raised my vibration, and what raising your vibration automatically raises your standards. So when you do that, you automatically attract a higher caliber of man because he can feel it on you. He can feel it in you, right? So it wasn't even like a conscious decision, like I'm going to go get a better, a better man. It was like when I raised my vibration, I, my standards raised and the quality of men that I magnetized raised. So usually when women are in low vibration and they're in fear and they're in doubt and they want some attention and they want some company or they're bored, then they'll settle out of just out of some nonsense not realizing what they're capable of experiencing and who they're capable of experiencing it with wow 
That's heavy. And I agree with you 100%. Once the consciousness is raised, you magnetize a different type of experience. It's automatic. It's automatic. When you have a low when you have a low consciousness, you're actually dating the standard and not the person. When you raise the consciousness, you become the principle. You become the standard. And it's not something you have to adhere to. It's just who right. you are. Right. That's, and that's men, heavy shit men right will take care of you and support you and nurture you and, and, and attempt to claim you all day, all night if they get what, you, what and who you are. Post nut clarity. When you realize that condoms are cheaper than diapers. <laughs> post nut clarity. Amen. Let's hashtag Amen post nut clarity. Let's go to Twitter right now. Amen. If you're on Twitter right now, go to Twitter and hashtag post nut clarity. I want you guys to call in and tell me your favorite post uh, hashtag nut clarity hash nut post post nut clarity hashtag hashtag post nut clarities <laughs> tweet at Zoe Williams <laughs> your best post nut clarity moment that you've had oh man mm. do you know how many bullets I've dodged after that <laughs> ooh you <laughs> right? it's like they look different it's like before you come, before you nut, you got them glasses on and they live. Then after you nut, them glasses come off. You go, oh, oh. I've du- hey, I've I've ducked a lot of them. I've seen. Hey, I, you guys call us. The number to dial yeah. is three two three two thirty forty four forty five. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it like that. I don't know. It's got. I gotta keep saying it until it goes away. Veronica, go ahead and make your point. No, what, one thing that I, one, th- one experience that I had that really showed me how, how sexual urgent men are. I think women are sexual, but we're more like an ocean or a tsunami. Men are urgent. And so one time I was working with Nichama and he, who's a sexual energy worker, and he decided to run energy on the side of my body that embodied masculine so that I could feel what it felt like to be a man. Right? And by palpating certain energies on one side of my body, I could feel what it literally felt like to run a man's energy. And I thought I would go fucking crazy because the sexual urgency is so overwhelming and so oh, I, I real. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I could, okay. see, I could, see, I could see that men... I was a little like, scared for a moment, but now I see what you're talking about. I was a no, little nervous. No, it's just that, that, that urgency. So if there's anything that makes have men make strange decisions in that way, it's because that sexual imperative is so fucking urgent. But let me just say this, I don't Veronica. Know, I don't let know me, how you even get through life. Let me just say this, Veronica. It, 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 it waxes and wanes at different times in our life. There's, there's times where men get serious about why we're alive. And it wanes when we get serious mm-hmm. about why we're alive. Because then we start fucking our purpose instead of just fucking around. Right. Right. Good. But until yeah. we figure out what our purpose is, there is an urgency to beat that thing up. <laughs> to get poached nut urgent. <laughs> no, I'm just sorry. We, I want to hear everybody's post nut. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah. Is this how you guys feel all the time after sex? Or? Nah. Like when we fuck a girl that we love, that that we really want, that we're really into, that it's that it's it's that it's that that it's that shit, it's that goddamn it. <sighs> so know. post nut clarity doesn't exist if you're in love with someone. Not really. Not really. But but kinda. Because they're still, okay, that's my girl. I can get that pussy any time. You understand? Let me get a little humping. I got seven minutes of fucking for you. The game about to come on. I'm going to squeeze you off real quick. <laughs> then I'm going to run in there and catch the game. I got to see the tip off. <laughs> I'm just saying. So 
when I say post nut, you know, some like when we don't give a fuck after sex, that means we really don't give a fuck about you. But if we, hey, can we get this in real quick? Got some situations to take care of, but I still love you. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It, it's not the same. That makes Go me ahead, feel John. better. All right, what I was going to say is when you're in love, see, the difference is you still get post nut clarity. John, how old are you? I'm 25. You ain't never been in love. Turn I'm in love right now. <laughs> two seconds? <laughs> all right, two seconds. All right, all right ready? Okay. <laughs> so when you're in love, you get post nut clarity also. But your clarity is, oh, I love this girl. You know what I'm saying? When it's some random ass girl, you get post on clarity. You're like, what the fuck is this shit? You know? What am I doing? Yeah, here? what am I doing here? But when you're in love, you get post on clarity. But it's like, oh, I still love her. You know what I so mean? So it's positive post on clarity. Yeah, it's like, oh, she's so cute. But you it's, know? it's always there. It's always there. <laughs> and that's it. Post nut clarity is Mike's always off. there. It's, right. I got some from my girl. Oh, but I got something to do. I hug you when I get home. <laughs> we'll cuddle when we get when I get home. <laughs> so it's levels to the clarity. It's okay. levels to it, man. True or false? Do women allow themselves to be played just so they can feel needed or wanted? I know that's a hurtful question. 323 230 4445. Listen, I'm going to take a quick break, but when I come back, I expect the phone lines to be fully blasting. We got callers, but I want more. Call us, and I want to hear your post-nut clarity moment. 323-230-4445. The voice of reason. Hot button radio. (laughs) Hey, ladies and gentlemen. The voice of reason is back in the building. We over here laughing because these questions... I still want to know why women are so susceptible to certain behaviors. And it's not just, listen, can I pose this question? Ladies, call me right now, 323-230-4445, and tell me what behavior works best on you. Because we can't score a touchdown unless you let us in. What male behavior, right, gets us into Yoni land, right, an all-day pass <laughs> into Yoni land? I want to know because sometimes these behaviors, and I always tell women, you, you've you heard me say this a million times, Veronica. I say women date ideas, and those ideas are associated or related to certain behaviors from men. So if a man's behavior is in alignment with a woman's idea of him or idea of relationship, she tends to let her guard down. But I said, the only thing that speaks louder than behaviors are his intentions. And a man's intention is connected directly to a woman's intuition. Ugh, yikes. This is ugly. So if... Behaviors speak louder than anything for women. Most women will concede to that fact. And behaviors, oh God, this is a this is a hurtful thing to say, but I have to say it. Women are like corporations. They bottom line out. The bottom line is how you behave. Women typically don't think contextually when it comes to relationships. Now Mm. The enlightened woman may because she's connected to her intuition and she makes a conscious decision to move forward in a situation. But the average woman is just all emotion, ideals, and looking for a concomitant behavior to lock into that. Am I wrong about that, Veronica? Uh, I, I think you're I think you're right. I mean, I look I don't. And you know, I, I you could I probably I listen, I could have gotten paid a billion times over if I had really tried to work it on the ideal money angle. I just never did. I always I always clock for men's masculinity and I clock for it with my body and my intuition. Right? So I'm always clocking for is he a man, right? Is he masculine? Is he secure? Is he secure in his in himself? Because I hate some bitch energy. So you know, so so sometimes it doesn't look like the societal ideal. Sometimes it looks like the, a famous alpha male that you've heard of on TV. Sometimes it looks like both of those things. But I'm looking for the masculinity and the 
I don't know. So I think if you're if you're if you're settling for something else, I don't know. I don't know what you do. I don't know. I don't know how. To, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I know it's a struggle for a lot of women, man. Let's get some brothers in here. Can, just a taste. Let's get some people in here right now to speak on this. We framed it up well enough. Women, you're going to get played every time you look just at a man's behavior. His behavior is designed to cater. Somebody quote that. A man's behavior is designed to cater. And once we get to Decatur, we go get that cooter. And once we get that cooter, you go, who is this? Post nut clarity. <laughs> I'm introduced to an entirely different dude. I'm just telling you. You've changed. You're different. Huh. You damn skippy. <laughs> if it was a little wetter, I'd be the same. <gasps> Ugh. 323, 230, 44, 45. Let's get to homie Ronan. Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> What's up family Hey what's happening Pam <laughs> What's going on God damn <laughs> You already know what it is It's Friday night we up in here tripping <laughs> Yeah yeah Trip like a motherfucker um, Today's topic Post direct to our hangover um, Post erectile hangover. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Uh, oh man, I've, I've I've experienced this many times. There's been, I think, uh, Veronica hit the nail on the head when it comes to that uh, energy thing. Because when you're talking to someone, you're vibing, everything's cool. And then there's been times where you then got it in, and then I looked over and like, I think I disrespected my dick again. And sure enough. There it is. <laughs> it's like it's something like okay, there's some you can sit there and there's some you can be cool with and vibe with and everything like you know I'm really feeling this chick. But then there's sometimes where you look at it like you know what I can see reasons to fuck with her. I mean like you know she got this going on not just monetarily but just her in general. So it is kind of like your intuition tell you you know you don't pull the lever. You pulled out a winner, or you laid up with a toxic Avenger. It's a wonderful. toxic Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this though. I always okay. say it, and I'm gonna say it again. Cool Mo D. When that motherfucker told me that shit, Cool Mo said, "Hey, these women don't understand that every man will fuck with you. That doesn't yeah. necessarily means he fuck with you." <laughs> He'll fuck you, yeah. but he don't fuck with you. True. And that's a real situation. I will, this, I will say this about the ladies. A lot of times you get fucked over because you basically allowed, your, you, you set your intuition aside. So while you sitting there trying to barter ass, you wonder why your heart has shit stains on it. Because oh. your intuition. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Wow. Wow. Okay, just stop. Oh Hold on, God. stop. Hold on, stop. Oh that motherfucker God. dropped the line. He didn't drop the <laughs> mic. He dropped the line. Fuck it. Wait a minute. Women are out there bartering their ass and putting their intuition in the closet. Ah, oh, wow. Then you wonder why your heart got shit stains on it. Damn it, Ronan. Off the back page. Wow. Veronica That was Veronica who dropped Jesus It's evil Phone lines are evil 323-230-4445 Is the number to dial We want to hear from you man I want to I want to help women I really do You know what women should really be If a woman I'm talking about in terms of intimate relationships and interfacing during the dating process. A woman cannot be predictable to a man. She just can't. If he could answer the questions he's asking you, right? Rona and Veronica's back. Excellent. If he can answer the questions that he's asking you, 
and he's answering them like a psychic, she going to say this. She going to do that. He, listen, he has way too much power. And he's going to he's gonna tire. He's going to get bored. And he's going to bounce. Right. Exactly. And, and, and to me, this is another conversation me and the homie Modi had. He said men are more physiological. Women are more sociological. And this is how we're able to get physical with y'all. Because all we got to do is play the social game rule. And we fucking... You know, it, it's but, the, you don't find men, and I'm going to give this to you, Veronica. You don't find men sitting around going, damn it, I'm 27 and I'm not married and I don't have a kid yet. You don't see men sitting around. Women do. And that makes them vulnerable when they interface with post-nut clarity. Mm-hmm. Speak to that, Veronica, and then I'm going to bring Ronan well, back in. And so this is the key, I think, to uh, cause listen, if a woman is really in her right, if she's in her right mind, if she's in her right pussy, the whoa, man whoa, is whoa, going hold on, to hold on. To Wait, stop. What? When she's in her right pussy? Right now, there. stop. We're going to have to come back and understand some. Is there a wrong pussy to be in? Speak on it. Yes, it's the needy one that needs attention and approval more than it needs energy. Ooh. That's the wrong pussy. You got to get into the right pussy. So, Damn, that was heavy. If Say it she, again. If, Say she's, it. if she's in her right mind and her right pussy, the man is going to want to marry her after when he's in post-nut clarity. That's the reality, but here's the deal about what you're saying, though. We, if, if a woman is sitting around and her identity is wrapped up in a, what a man thinks, and in other words, if she is clear about herself and her goals and her purpose in life and her, what she wants, she's not she's not waiting for a man to come along and bestow some sense of approval on her. And believe me, that will intrigue him. When she has some identity that is her own. Wow. Ronan? Yes, sir. Go ahead and wrap it up. Let me get you off this line. We got Jeff from Houston. <laughs> well, I definitely agree with uh, Veronica because there are a lot of women out here who are not in their right pussy. I mean, I've been in some self-realized pussy before. And That's some good God pussy, damn, by the way. Shit, yeah, That shit is fire. Yeah. It's like I thought about. That shit is like I'm orange like, roughy. Man, hey, there's quite a few times. There's quite a few times when I had some like I didn't mind window shopping through Jared's every now and then. I didn't mind. Right, that's but, female shishimi. Yeah, yeah. Then, there's a lot who have uh, the pussy of an emotional vampire, and they're looking to suck on any old thing just to feel some some measure of fulfillment. Like you have chicks who live on the two minute warning type thing, and you can tell. Oh. You can smell <laughs> Go ahead, finish. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it's like okay, like you know how you're down by ten points and you got two minutes left, so she's doing any and everything to get love. So she's like, you know what, I'll give some ass so he can love me. But knowing damn well, he's just like, okay, I'm gonna skeet and retreat, or I'm gonna get love to get a ring, or I'm gonna get love to get a baby. Or you know, I'm, I'm gonna get some ass or whatever for attention, and she's always she's never fulfilled. It starts from within, and you'll notice right. I mean, self-realized pussy is like it it it, it, it moisturizes itself. You be so like those, Tyrone Bigham. Uh, what's his name? Tyrone yeah. Bigums. Yeah. You be like Tyrone yeah. Bigums after that self-realized yeah. pussy. Is anymore that pussy? He's right. Where that pussy yeah, at? Right. You got that pussy in a jar on the shelf, don't you? Oh. <laughs> men, men try to get that on lock. Right. Men try to get right. self-realized right. pussy on lock as quickly as possible. That's just how it works. Well, so let me just say this. Let me just say this. Right. Ladies, if you're not deeply connected to your intuition, if you're not self-realized, your pussy is <laughs> belongs to the streets. Yes. You, you got to charge that pussy to the game. Because you're not going to be it. able to negotiate <laughs> or negotiate. You know, <laughs> it's really negotiating. That's what it is. It's really negotiating. 
Because now, because now you're trying to barter and leverage, and you're negotiating. And if you don't have more resources than him, you can't really negotiate. Am I? Yeah. Is this is that wrong to say, Veronica? Yeah, I mean, I, th- 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 in other words, no one, a woman should never have to angle for anything with her pussy. Her pussy should precede her in terms of setting <laughs> the stage for her Stop. to be served by men. Her pussy is her emissary? <laughs> Hawk, in a few days, the rest of her will arrive, but I am here before her. <laughs> You are to bathe me until she arrives. I am to soak in salt water. You know, I, what I'll, the I'll fuck? This. Veronica is the shit for that because self-realized pussy is, it is an extension of her. When it comes to the other one, that's their, that's their exclamation point. That's what they have. Wow. So. Hey, Ronan, I appreciate you, brother, for calling me <laughs> in. This shit is crazy. That's crazy. Woo! Thank you, brother. <laughs> Ronan in the building. He always <laughs> delivers. This nigga here. So there's really, uh oh, there's really a reason for post nut clarity. If you ain't shit, he gonna feel the energy of it later. And vice versa, though. Vice versa. But you know, fear makes you cling on to a situation. That isn't good for you. Sometimes you got some people that say, well, I'd rather be with this than to have nothing at all. Even though energetically they know on the inside, this is some bullshit. It's a lot of people who live that way. Phone lines are jumping right now. Veronica, let's go to Jeff in uh, South Carolina. Line four. Jeff, you're on the voice of reason. Speak on it. Post nut clarity. Today's topic. What's good, y'all? Yeah. What's happening? I can't call it, man. It's Friday, so you already know. But, man, I just want to keep it real brief for you. Um, this, I think a lot of women, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of women don't know that there is a such thing as post, uh, tr- uh, post-nut post syndrome. I, I forgot you're phrasing it. but I Post-nut like clarity. Po- post-nut syndrome, it all works. Right, post-nut clarity. I just feel like they don't understand that there is a such thing. I and I feel like if they did understand that there was a such thing, like, I think it would help us in relating. But at the same time, on the flip side of that, to take responsibility for my own actions, because I feel like I am dealing with something like that right now in my own life with this one lady. But if I could take responsibility for my actions, I can see when she's using the pussy as like a bargaining chip or she's, she's leveraging the pussy. And I and I and I'm not even gonna say I fall for the bait. I just give her the benefit of the doubt when I know, like, okay, wait, I know I'm gonna have post nut sense. I, I know I'm gonna have post nut clarity on this. I shouldn't do it, but then I'm like, nah, you putting it on the table. I ain't no bitch. Come here, like, I don't know. I know. You be like, what? You putting that pussy on the table? Right. Dry okay. or not, I'm gonna smash that pussy up. It's terrible. Yep. We think that way. We're men. For Christ, don't put a pussy directly in front of our face. We're going to respond. Even if we really don't want to be with you. Oh, brother, I got to ask you this question. Jeff. Jeff, are you there? Jesus. Oh, no. (laughs) His fucking phone went limp. (laughs) What the hell? Hey, do you think men suffer from post ejaculation guilt syndrome? Have you ever woke up and just been like, God damn, I hit that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shh. My whole life is worthless. Right? I got to be more attractive than that. I got to do better. I, hey, I don't know if I've had a moment like that. But I have had an energetic moment like that. See, a lot of people misinterpret it. They think I'm talking about, like, an ugly girl or something like that. No, I'm talking about the energy. Like, I had this one girl. Oh, my God. She was bad. Actress. She still acts right now. Very talented. Virgo sister. I don't want to put her out. I don't want to give up too much information. She might be listening and be like, you didn't love me. Because I still talk to her every now and again. But, um. 
know what I'm saying? We don't have sex. I ain't had sex with her in over 20 years. Beautiful girl. But when I tell you neurotic than a motherfucker. Right. The type that'll... And she did this before. This is when we were young. I was like 23. She was 24 or something like that. You know, she put the tip of my dick in her mouth and was like, oh, no, you don't deserve this. Like, like she remembered I was a fucked up person. Well, why are you naked with me anyway? You understand? It's the, the energetics. Post-ejaculation <laughs> guilt syndrome. Where you go, God damn, if I fuck this girl, if I have sex with this woman, I'm going to regret it. I got another woman like that, but I don't want to mention it. It's, uh, it's a little too hurtful. <laughs> Call us right now. 323-230-4445. Veronica. I know in your journeys, you've had those experiences where you were like, God damn, I let this dude pass the threshold. Fuck, I blew it. How do you get past those moments? Uh, (laughs) uh, How do you get past those moments? I don't know because, I mean... you know, my, listen, I love my children, but getting letting their dad get past the threshold was like outside of them. It was I, if I had to do it over again, I never would have, would have, would have. Because I just, I just, I don't know. So that was the last time I ever made that mistake was was 25 years ago. Uh, I have, I'm very discerning since then. I would say in my wayward youth in high school, I mean, in, in like in college, um, no, I've always enjoyed who I chose. I, I, I honestly have. I, but I, I've always chose instinctively, not socially. So I've always enjoyed the lover that I've had, and I've always felt very well loved by the men that I interacted with. I would say that that my ex husband is probably the worst choice I ever made in that regard. But can't I, you actually, can't you learn to love your mistakes? Because ultimately, that mistake twenty five years ago helped develop. The fucking unicorn that sits right. before I, us I, today. Right. But uh, I love, I love my kids, but I, I would never choose a beta bitch male ever again to interact with. How many ever. of you ladies have allowed a beta bitch male to come on in and squeeze off one or two rounds? Call us right now. Post fuck clarity, like <laughs> him. He got in. Was I drunk? Did this nigga? Is he Bill Cosby? Did this nigga roofie me? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, when a roofie, when you can, when you can scream rape to justify your mistake, <laughs> call us, ladies. Three two three two thirty forty four forty five. Now there's there's a young lady on Twitter at Libra Bad Girl seventy eight. She says, "Oh, I need some tips. These guys these days play games." Veronica, give her two tips on how to discern when a motherfucker's playing games. Well, I think, so I don't want to make this sound too esoteric, but it really is kind of the truth. There is a there is a calibrator that exists between your vagina, your root chakra, your, your solar plexus, which reads the truth, your heart, and your throat. As well as your your crown and your third eye, right? So there's a there's a circuit, a channel that runs up and down your body that is God's barometer for some for the truth and the bullshit. The problem is is that so often that shit is disconnected, and so our sexuality because we've been made to be ashamed of it, our root is disconnected from our heart, is disconnected from our. So we have to begin to do something to get that realigned. In other words, begin to listen with men from your pussy. And I don't mean okay, wait, wait, wait. Being, Slow down. Being, Hold on. Slow down. Of- Slow down, Veronica. You know, I have to guide right. you here. Just All right. let me guide you during this process. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> Anyway, I have 
almost went into another space. Now, uh, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, when you say a woman has to let her pussy lead or listen to her pussy, you're yeah. going to have to explain the process. Okay. Because I didn't have women say, my pussy is a flower, my pussy, you know, talk about it or whatever. But it's almost like the pussy has a separate identity. Is that true? Do you guys, it's you and then your pussy is somebody else, like behind the throne or something? Speak to that. It should all be connected. In other words, your heart, your throat, your your solar plexus, which which, uh, which, um, listens to truth. Your solar plexus is really the shock of where truth comes in, and you can discern truth. That should, the energy between those should all be running. And so when you listen to a man, yes, you can notice your arousal, because if he's speaking some truth, you'll notice your arousal. But if he's got some bullshit bitch in him, you'll register that, too, if you're listening deeply enough. You'll register that, too. And it'll be, it'll be not his words. It'll be an instantaneous sense of him about whether he's on about some bullshit or not. Now listen, I thought if, if, if it's meant to be consensual casual sex, right, protected sex that makes some sense for two grown people, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that because that's what grown sexual people should do. It's only when you are trying to turn it into something that it's not that it becomes a problem. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, let me just say this. There's a book out there called Power Versus Force, uh, written by Dr. David Hawkins, which talks about the, the hidden human determinants of behavior. And he talks about kinesiology and how you can instantly get stronger when you're in the presence of truth and how your body instantly gets weaker in the presence of lies. And, you know, the, the, the esoteric breakdown that Veronica gave is the same thing. It's the same thing. I, I, listen, I, I've been told by many women that when, you know, I deliver a certain kind of information, they get wet. They get aroused. They get yeah. deeply drawn in. As they should. You know? As they should. And, As and, they should. And, and, and what I've also learned, because I didn't really learn this from my mother, because my mother was not very communicative right she didn't do a lot of talking you know she you know i just didn't get a lot of how females get down from my mother my mother would take care of us she'd cook and clean her clothes and buy us gifts and shit but just wasn't a lot of here's some game let me tell you how women operate wasn't a lot of that right but Mm -hmm. You're saying something that just brings me back to this point. I had to be in intimate relationships to kind of understand. You can't really lie to a woman. Even when she on some bullshit, she's on the bullshit because she put herself on it. It ain't really you that got her on the bullshit. It's her. It's her fantasy. Yeah, she's like... That's what I learned. On bullshit. Right. Yeah. That's that's what I learned. I learned that it be the women that be like, I'm going to believe this regardless of what the fuck is going on. Because I have never, every time I lied to a woman, I felt the shift in the relationship. And I felt her shift into, I'm just going to make this shit work. Because I like all the other shit about him. Right. That's right. Right? right? But I felt That's that right. shit. That's some real stuff right there. See, man, y'all got to stop underestimating these women. You think you got the coldest game in the world, but really she gaming you by playing. You must have something that she wants. You must have an idea or the ideal of what she thinks you are. You might be close to it. She might feel like she can mold you into it she might feel like she can nudge you into it. she's still invested but lord when they shift it's a cold it's, cold. Situ- it's a cold it's, cold it's a cold world she's, she's shifting out of her fantasy and uh, but believe me because our culture is so we condition our women and program our women into so much fantasy whether it's whether it's your wedding day or cinderella or whatever there is so much fantasy that we program into women, and women are the subconscious of the planet, so we hold on to that stuff. 
And so we are hugely invested in that as a, as a, as a species. Hey, it's about to go down. Listen, phone callers, I'm coming to you right after the break. We're about to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's all phone lines. Post nut clarity for men, post fuck clarity for women. How many of you ladies out there just living a lie, maintaining a lie? You work at Lie Jiffy Lube, just over there changing the lies oil. (laughs) <laughs> rotating the lies tires just keeping this shit going when you know this relationship ain't good is he playing you or are you playing you we're gonna find that shit out when we come back 323-230-4445 voice of reason hot button ladies and gentlemen the voice of reason has returned to hot button radio that was the mega mix from yes dj zoot julian ramirez he is the He is the cousin of Richard Ramirez, the famous night stalker here in Los Angeles. <laughs> DJ serial killer, right? No, Julian Ramirez, man. He's on here killing it. Hey, Julius, where can they find you, man? You got a Twitter? What, what's happening? Uh, just follow me at DJ Julian Ramirez on Twitter, Instagram. Um, Snapchat. Word. See where I'm at. You know, he just joined the Voice of Reason team, and he out here spinning. Yeah. You figure Damn. deals? I'm with it. I'm with it. I love it, man. Listen, if you're just tuning in after our little mega mix, talking about post nut clarity. Look it up. Urban Dictionary. Post nut clarity. A woman gave me this topic, by the way. Right. So. Don't think that Zoe is just being ratchet or hood or whatever you want to call it. The sister gave it. She was like, yo, we got to do this topic. She's 24, and this is what they're talking about, post-nut clarity. So I flipped it around and said, no, nah, let's do it this way. Why do I keep getting played? I know this is a question women. Women hate getting played. That's why they're so vindictive. That's why there's so much revenge in women's heart. Am I, uh, I ain't even going to ask, am I lying? But. Really, hate getting played, but socially engineered to get played. You remember that um, TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man? There was an episode where all of the women were robots, and he called them fembots. Most women are societal fembots. You follow the rules, and that makes it easy for us to manipulate you into the boudoir. So I switched it. Why do women keep getting played? A deeper look into ways women can protect themselves from a man's best behavior. Post-nut clarity. (laughs) Chris has a couple of post-nut clarity examples. Chris, uh, what you got? What did you pull uh, from the internet, man? uh, Chief Polo says, post-nut clarity, beating off before she comes over just to see if she still turns you on when she gets there. Wow. Post-nut clarity. Uh, another one uh, by the homie Kevin says, uh, post nut clarity had me resetting my body count <laughs> every other month. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so my, my best one that I've seen was um, when my main chick sex game is better than my side chicks. Post nut clarity. Wow. <laughs> That's post nut clarity. That puts the side chick in a whole different perspective. You'd be like, this is why your Christmas is on the 26th. Right? <laughs> this is why your Valentine's Day is on the 15th. <laughs> yeah. So you got a chick for a post-fuck clarity. That's um, Corey Holcomb, by the way. A, a lot of body says when you tell your dude and your ex, uh, hold on. when you tell your dude and your ex want to try to work it out and work it out. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Wow. How many of you women had post sex clarity after you cussed out the love of your life and went and got some new dick right and then was like oh I made the the huge mistake gosh I blew it how do you offer your ex in a reproach mall how do you you get back with him how do you offer him that reproach mall huh how do you guys come back together you know I just had 
six so and a half inches of limp dick Ooh. in my mouth, but it wasn't the limp dick I wanted. I want your six and a half inches of limp. How do you? <laughs> you were the perfect size for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. You know we reckless. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're reckless. Listen, we got some callers on the line. Let's 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 run through them real quick. I want to go to Phoenix, Arizona, line five, Cherokee. Cherokee, you're on the voice of reason. Speak to us. Cherokee. Ch -ch 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 Cherokee. Ch -ch uh. Cherokee. Ch -ch Goodbye. <laughs> let's go to Florida. Line six, Rod. Rod, you're on the voice of reason. What's up, man? Holler at me, man. What's up? All right. Uh, first giving honor to Pastor Zoe and First Lady Veronica. <laughs> Pastor Zoe and First Lady <laughs> Veronica. <laughs> Hold it a boco shot. Hey, hey, I appreciate what y'all doing, man. Y'all always uh, putting them hot topics out there. I'm always learning from y'all, man. Where, uh, where? But on the topic, um, I don't know if I've had post nut regret, but uh, I know I have had pre nut regret. Say more. Uh, jumped on a couple of Booger Wolves, uh, taking one for the team for my homeboys, man. And uh, that one just didn't work out right. <laughs> so you were caught up in a... <laughs> you know what? I've done this before, though. Let me, let me tell the story. You guys remember when Johnny Mac was on the show. I remember when we were all... At the at at the fucking Jamie Foxx concert, the Intuition concert, and and Johnny had this girl that he was trying to holler at, that he was trying to get with, that he was trying to take back, you know, to the hotel. Now she already knew the game because she was, you know, he called her and was like, "Yo, I'm gonna be in your town. We're gonna be in Dallas. Had that thing ready for me." Well, she came to the concert with her home girl. Now, at the time, I had a beautiful girlfriend, but she couldn't come to the concert with me. She's in L.A. I'm, a, I'm out there. So Johnny Mac is like, so your girl ain't here and you ain't cheating. I need you to be on security. Take one for the team. I need you to be on watch. This is your watch right now. So I'm like, uh, is she is she pretty? I mean, she got to at least be pretty if I'm going to be on security. And he was like, yeah, she's cool. When I tell you <laughs> a motherfucking WWF UFC <laughs> wilder beast, a wilder monkey came in. <laughs> I was like, whoa, shit. He's <laughs> like, Sasquatch is in this. Come over here and sit with me. Ugh. And she was really trying to get active that evening. It was it was a horrible situation, but Johnny was like, thank you, man. Good looking out. Johnny's girl was, she was fine as fucking baby powder. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Fuck. But she had a wilder monkey with her, and it was terrible. So oh, yeah. I understand that kind of regret. I've lived it. <laughs> thank you for the call, brother. I appreciate you, Rod, for chiming in to the church. <laughs> The Church of Voice of Reason. That's our church. That um, is our church. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. First, first Lady Veronica is hilarious. Uh, hey, hilarious, listen. Hilarious. <laughs> let's run over to Vegas real quick. On line three, Andrew from Vegas. Andrew, speak to it. Y'all going to burn in hell for that. <laughs> 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 Ain't no hell in our church. Hey, 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 as my grandmother said, y'all don't, don't, don't play with God like that. <laughs> all, right. all right. All right, all right. But I have a, I have a question for you. Um, would you rather make would you rather make love or fuck or whatever you want to do to a wildebeest, or would you rather be married to someone who doesn't want to have sex with you? God, I would have to fuck the wilder monkey. I would have to strap her down, yeah. of course. <laughs> And then we'd have to bring in a team of uh, bring in a team of barbers, but uh, 
Yeah, I'd no. rather. <laughs> wow, you, you, you have no respect for your penis? Is that what you're saying? No, but he said no. having sex with a woman who doesn't want to have sex with you is damn near as close to rape as you can get without it being rape. Swack. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a damn shame because I'm married too. And she, I, I don't know if it's me or if it's her pastor or first lady because they, I always say they control in her mind and her heart and what they, what she does on a daily day basis. Uh oh. First me and, I, I, I can't argue with her, so I mean that's my wife. So I don't even know what to do. I mean I'm leaning on the experts of y'all too. So, so now let's get Please, serious. Get now let's get serious. Change my music to something a little more subtle. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-seven to forty million married people, married couples, are in a sexless marriage. Where the marriage lacks intimacy, it becomes a business. And when I say a business, I mean the business of being married. Taking care of the house, taking care of the bills. If there's children, taking care of the children. All of the responsibilities come before the intimacy, cultivation, or nurturing in that relationship. And there are a lot of people out there that are struggling. But when you throw, but when you throw the wrinkle, and I'm going to bring you in, Veronica. When you throw the wrinkle of religion in, and I'm not just speaking of religion, I'm talking about the people who, like, if, if you could be more honest and, and more candid with your pastor than you can be with your husband, there's a problem. Like, when they're advising her on how she should live her relationship or how she should function in it and her role in it, there's a problem. Because, listen, whether it's your mother-in-law a pastor, cousins, unmarried friends, whatever. Whenever there's an outside entity with a controlling hand inside your relationship, that relationship is doomed to fail, in my opinion. Veronica? Well, and I, I just don't understand this whole notion of maintaining monogamy when, when, when sexuality isn't happening. In other words, I think Wait, we have to Veronica, so- Veronica, hold on one second. Uh, Andrew, can you turn your mic, uh, your radio down just a little bit? Because we're getting a little feedback. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a little bit, bro. Now, Veronica. <laughs> no, I just see we we often are, are so committed to the institution of marriage that we forget about the people that are in the relationship because the institution and the idea of monogamy and that whole contract becomes more important than the needs of the people that are in it. So that's why I never enter into relating. With a, a like a like a like a, a commitment to monogamy, I, I I will enter it to the commitment of truth and fidelity, but not monogamy. Because if shit goes left, then you have no recourse, because it was never designed sanely to begin with. So, it's, it's, from my perspective, if somebody else has lost their mind in the relationship, and that includes the withholding of sex, then you get to say, hey, guess what? I I lost my mind too. But you're on notice. I'm not. I'm sane now, and I'm going to do what I need to do to get my needs met in this life, whether you choose to participate or not. That's what adults do that are not necessarily bound by this construct that we've been fed about how this this is supposed to be. And then you come back to the concept of this, Andrew. Do I have too much to lose by breaking up? Because a lot of people yeah. are in a relation in, in marriage, not a relationship, but marriage. They're in a marriage that they don't want to be in, but they stay there because it's cheaper to keep each other. Mm-hmm. Right? So, of course, right. the number one indicator of wealth in America is marriage, and the number one indicator of poverty is divorce. So you got a lot of people that are just, fuck, let me just stay because I'd be doing even worse away. Now, when you stay in a situation like that, there is a slow, erosive process that is happening. Oh, you're eroding internally because you're somewhere you don't want to be and you're fighting, uh, not really fighting against it. You're kind of settled in it and it eats you away after a while. Now, mm-hmm. 
The question is, you need to have you sat down and really take an inventory of what you have to lose and what you have to gain. Who's going to be harmed? Yeah. Are there young kids that are going to be harmed? What You understand what I'm saying? Like harmed if you leave. Because, you know, the dynamics of a, of a household changes when dad leaves the house. Especially the little boys, little girls, dynamics change. I, I, I took inventory. I've written things down. I prayed. I, 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 I tried to li- I, I fasted. I did everything. But damn, though, my dick ain't going to get any younger. No, the dick ain't going to get younger. Five. Oh, Lord. I mean, Jesus, what, what, what have I done wrong in my life to deserve this? Mm. I mean, when we were married, we were just fine. Well, what did you marry her for? Let's go into that. Let's get what that, too. What did I marry her for? Because I married, I married someone who loved me for me. I could never get any, I could never, I, I did the dating thing. It don't work out for me. For some reason, it don't work out for me. They like, I mean, those young girls like hanging out with, with roughneck boys and, and, and like getting hurt. They just like getting hurt where I'm from. So let me come back. And it don't make no sense. Let me come back. So I, hey. You married, I, 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 you married because you're a, a monogamist. You have to be in a monogamous relationship, right? I'm sorry, define monogamous? Monogamy, just you and her. One person, one couple together, y'all. No cheating, monogamous. Us. Right, right. That's your style, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I'm sure you had other choices, right, before you landed on her. Why her? Well, it's not like she wasn't the only fish in the sea though I mean I mean there were others before her but they I mean for some strange reason it, the relationship that for example me going out with some chick who had a who had a bad temper each time you know you know I had to leave to go to work or I had to you know even my mom started calling me around you know and this and that and this and the other or I had, I had a, you know, I dated a white girl once, and she started burning all my shit. I mean, it, it just didn't work out. And finally, I found somebody who loved me for who I was. So your wife loves and, and, you for who you are. You believe that still? Right. Yes, I do. All right. So if she loves you for who you are, what's going on in her that creates this intimacy deficit in your relationship? Have you had this conversation with her? Yes. This, this is too easy. This is too easy. She believes if she makes one mistake with God, she's automatically going to hell. Wow. That's what the pastor and first lady have put into her brain. She believes in all this stuff in the Bible, purebreded, what I say, and, and I, I try going your route, though. I've listened to you for years. I've gone your route. Mm. I've gone many routes. I've gone Dr. Umar's route. I've gone the many routes. I've read many books. I did research. She mm. doesn't want to listen to me. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. If that is her mentality, this is, to me, speaking in religious terms, this is unequally yoked, personified. She's somewhere spiritually and consciously that you aren't. Doesn't mean she's higher or lower. It just means she's in another world. And there's no amount of convincing that you can do that'll sway her back to your way. Because first off, let me, let me, let me acknowledge something that I hear on this call. Number one, you love this woman. And sometimes when you love somebody like that, it becomes... The fuel, you put the love, love is like a fi- a log that you throw on a fire to say, I'm going to use this love to get her to see it my way or to get her to come back. And I'm saying you can't, you can't use love in that way. Sometimes you got to step back. See, when you're in the space, sometimes it's hard. And I'm not asking you to leave your wife. I'm just saying step back from what you want take a step back from trying to fix it 
right? Because sometimes mm-hmm. trying to fix it actually exacerbates the problem. You got to let her sift through it. No man is perfect, right? There's going to be a time where that preacher going to say something stupid as hell and it's going to resonate. There's going to be a time when he says something that isn't energetically in alignment with her. Now, on the flip side, I'm not asking you to wait forever. Right. But at some point, this is the, and this is hard, at some point, the decision is yours. Whether you say, hey, I'm going to stay with this woman who loves me, who is misguided by some external shit. Or I'm going to jumpstart my life because I don't have to wait. Either way, you're going to have to come into this maturity. Like there's a maturity that you have to come into, too. Because there are some people that will turn this into a masochistic situation. You're in pain, but they'll stay. There are other people who will do exactly what I'm saying and just pull themselves out out of trying to fix it. When I say pull themselves out, I'm not saying leave the relationship. I'm saying pull yourself away from trying to fix it, trying to fix her, trying to change her. Do you understand what I'm saying, Veronica? Yeah, all you can do is take a stand for your truth in the face of that level. You know, you got to ask if she's married to you or married to Jesus. That's a hell of a question. Mm. Oh, oh, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. Oh no, oh no, the preacher ain't white, is he? No, he's black. But I, you talking I, about I Jesus on the wall, the, pa- the painting? <laughs> yeah, but I asked him a que- I asked her a question many, many times. Is, is he is he white or is he black? And what did she say? Damn it, Bobby! Uh, Listen, we gotta get a, we gotta get different phones. It's them, it's them. So he got Boost Mobile. It ain't us. Okay, because I thought we had cricket in this bitch. Okay, good. Please call back, Andrew. Three two three two thirty forty four forty five. Man, today's show is bananas. Please call back, Andrew. Andrew, call back, man. We want to work you through. We want to walk you through this process, man. Damn. I kind of even don't even want to move on to the next caller. But I have to. Let's go to D.C. Mike, line four. What's happening, Bill? <laughs> hey, what's Mike, happening? what's happening, Mike? <laughs> what's happening, Bill? Hey, Happy oh, New man. Year. <laughs> What's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what, what was that? What was the name you gave it? Was it Post Nut Clarity? Was that Post Nut Clarity? Post Nut Syndrome? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't, I didn't fuck a lot of bull dagger looking chicks, and I fucked a lot of girls, and I look back at all the girls. You fuck Manny Fresh? That I, that I knew that I never should have went near. I never really regretted it. I just, my whole thing is like, I just hate the whole fact that. After I met, like, I'm ready for her to, like, leave. Like, I don't want her to spend the night. Like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to spend the day. And I just want to, my question to you and Veronica is, it's like, I like to do domestic things. It's just like, once I finish, I'm just ready for them to go. You know what I mean? Like, I could Let me just ask you this, Mike. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's a real serious question. Outside of sex, do you really even like women at all? Yeah, I do like women. It's just that I'm just ready for them to go after I finish. Like, am, am I wrong for saying that? No, no, no. This is why I asked that question. Because a lot of times, men don't have a lot in common with women in terms of a man is not going to go into a shopping mall and be there for six hours and, and leave with a, a fucking skirt and, and, and a hair bonnet or some shit, right? Men... We know what we want. We get in there. We get out. Sometimes you'll see a husband sitting on a couch somewhere in the goddamn lobby of the mall (laughs) with a fucking juicy juice cup just waiting on his wife. Like, there are things women do that men are just kind of disconnected from. And and in a low-level relationship, in most relationships, I would argue, the most people have in common is in the bedroom. 
different TV shows, different all t- you know all types of interests. You know, I'm taking a crochet class. Well, peace out. <laughs> Shit, crochet yourself some crochet yourself a thong. Maybe I'd be interested, right? Maybe that's it. That's why I asked you if you like, because when you got a woman that you're interested in and what she's interested in and she's interested in what you interested in, that shit, is, it makes for a better relationship. Am I wrong, Veronica? Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm in a situation right now where our interests are so alike and so aligned that it's like magic all the time. It's like constantly having yourself revealed to you. And if, if the interests, if there's no interests that are in any way connected or aligned, I don't understand the purpose of putting your dick in somebody. I really don't. Like, not really. <laughs> nah. That, but see, this goes back to our caller, Andrew. Thanks, Mike, for the call, man. We appreciate it. Great question. All right, take it easy, y'all. This goes back to Andrew in terms of, like, when you're invested in what it is and it's not living up to what your expectation of it is, you really got to question the expectation. Am right, I am I in love with the idea of this situation, right. or am I in love with the person? Right. The institution. This is what I had to discover in my own marriage, is that I realized, and, this, and listen, Christianity will specifically do a number on this for people more than it, it, it does a double whammy on it. So if you're... If, if, if the institution and the parameters of the institution and the expectation of the institution are more important than the needs of the people that are in the relationship, then something is fundamentally wrong. We focus on the wrong things. We say, it's the, it's the marriage that's important. No, it's your needs as a human being and as a man, as a woman, that are important. And if the people inside the relationship don't have a meaningful way to negotiate about needs and get needs met, then it's not really a relationship. It's an institution. Ugh. And you all know what happens to an institutionalized mind. Lights out, niggas. <laughs> you got a prison mentality. <laughs> Can you imagine your relationship is like a prison? Prison mentality? Lights out, lovers. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it becomes. But that's exactly what it becomes. And that's where he is. If you listen to him, he sounds like he's in prison. Especially when you look at these external factors where... It's almost like there's a religious Svengali, somebody puppeteering his wife. You really can't be satisfied or happy and married to somebody like that. When you say, hey, babe, can we get together tonight and have a little slap and tickle session? Let me text a pastor to see if everything. What? I'll beat your ass. This shit is going in. No, that's real, though. That's real. You know, you think uh, Lil, Lil Ron Ron needs a whooping because he got two Fs. Got an F in history, got an F in math. Let me consult Pastor uh, Newberry at Greater Faith United Uplifted Methodist Baptist and Episcopal African Episcopalian Church of God in Christ and Saints. Let me text him. <laughs> That, that can ruin your whole situation because oh, yeah. there is no leadership or joint leadership in the relationship. Correct. Now, instead of a dyadic relationship, dyad meaning two people, you and I, it's a triadic relationship. Now, unless, listen, if you're in a triad and one of them ain't a side yeah. nigga <laughs> or a side yeah. bitch... <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'm well, just talking see, about the decision making process. Go ahead. Because yeah, understand, like even in my situation with my ex husband, when somebody is married to Jesus or Allah or whatever, then, and then anything that they do, they can justify with Jesus. Anything that they don't do, they can justify with Jesus. And so, at some, I, 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 you know, fill in the blank with your deity of choice, but whatever the name is, right? So you never can be in true negotiation or true advocacy with them for the needs of the relationship because they can always invoke something that's external to the relationship in some moral fashion. So wow. how do you get the problem solved in any meaningful way inside of that situation? You can't solve problems. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> let's let's move through these callers real quick because our guy Andrew got back in. Let's let's do this really quick. 
Line five, Neptune, Georgia. Speak on it, Neptune. What's up, bro? What's happening, Pimp? Not much, man. Look, I'm a younger dude, 23. And if you ask me from my perspective, you know, from the outside looking into a bunch of, you know, adults, it, it comes from a lack of focus when you my age. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I went to school with people that thought that they should have kids and they felt like they lacked because they didn't have kids. So when you grow up in that mentality, it leads you to a mentality of falsehood where you, you go into church uh, trying to give your life to God, but you forgetting the fundamental foundation of your marriage, which is God first within the both of you. I think that's what Andrew's lacking. I came in on the tail end of the conversation, but if you ask me, that's what I feel. Man, let me just say, Neptune, we appreciate that contribution because he's on the line and he can hear it. So thank you for sharing that, bro. Call us anytime. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Let's get over to Missouri. You know who's coming in. We know him as Red. The homie Red. Stop it, stop it with the moanings, uh, Veronica. Jesus. <laughs> I'm getting moaning. very I'm getting very territorial right now. Okay? Oh. I'm about to find the nearest rock and piss down, on it. Boy. Down, down, boy. Down, <laughs> hey, Red, down. we got you, man. Turn your radio down just a little bit so you can chime in. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. All right. What's happening, Red? Oh, this ain't red. This is Andrew. Andrew, you back? Okay, I was trying to get red in just before you, but that's cool. Andrew, you back? Yes, sir. All right, what's happening, man? Well, uh, before before I don't know, uh, before I hung up or whatever, but I just want to apologize to you, you, why, and Veronica, for spoiling the fun because I know y'all was having the fun. It's Friday. Everybody's having a good time. Nah, man. Nah, no, no apology necessary, brother. This is what we're here for on the real. So, this is good. No need to apologize. I mean, I, I, I mean, like I said, you know, me and my wife, you know, we, 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 be, we believe in a whole bunch of other different things, but when, when, when it comes to something like this, I mean, there, there's nothing but a fight, and. I, I get like I get like holy water thrown at me, you know what I'm saying? Every time I I even ask a question about the past of first lady and we went to counseling one day and I wanted to ask a question about intimacy, what they thought about intimacy. And they went through this whole thing about sex and everything and, and sex only lasts a minute and all this other stuff. Okay, so they're teaching the Bible incorrectly. Let me just jump right in. They're teaching it incorrectly. The fucking marriage bed is not to be defiled, period. That is the rule in the Bible. The marriage bed is not to be defiled, meaning y'all can do whatever the fuck y'all want to do behind closed doors. It ain't nobody else's business. They're teaching the scripture wrong. And when they put you in a position to to, uh, accept false information, now, now she's being brainwashed. God is not going to be mad if you and your woman have mad, happy, joyful, lustful sex with each other. God's not going to be pissed off about that. God is not concerned about what goes on in your bedroom. Okay? He's not. You guys are husband and wife, as ordained and witnessed by him. According to the rules, right? According to the rules, you can't be married unless God was present. <laughs> right? And you're supposed to be and you're supposed to be subject to me as well as I to you. Exactly. Meaning my wife. So here's the thing. Now it's really dangerous. Because you got people teaching the wrong stuff, and then your wife is subject to it. Man, I just gotta listen, I wanna tell you the truth. I'm here. You cannot change a person who's that far gone. They've gotta come back. You can't dive into the abyss after them. Do you, you get lost trying to find them. Yeah, no. you can't. You can't think. You can't feel, and you can't comprehend for your spouse. And I wrote this in the relationship dismount where I said, just because you guys are, just because you guys go together, doesn't necessarily mean you grow together. 
Sometimes you grow closer. Sometimes you grow further apart. Sometimes you, you, you definitely grow at different rates. What you understand today may take her another two or three years to understand. Or five years. Hell, this has been 11. Wow. <laughs> I've been with her for 11 years. And you guys have already done counseling? Yes, we group counseling. Come on, man. Gr- wait, wait, hold on. Well, let me, who did you do the counseling with? Her pastor, her first lady. Okay, now, God damn it. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm going to jump through this goddamn microphone and whoop somebody's ass now. I'm starting to get pissed off. Go do counseling somewhere else and 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 you can you can you could do it with me. You could do it with Listen, she could do it. They could do it with Dr. Goulston. I mean, I we got resources over here, bro. But you got to go to an alternative source. You can't go to the source of the issue trying to find a solution in that problem. You can't the source of the problem is the church. So you think you can go to the church? That's like going to the government for justice. So I've been trying to tell this woman for years. Maybe you telling her she instead of asking her to her mother. Okay, but I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just saying from, from 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 what I've gone through. I'm just telling you what I'm going through. Okay, but she just believes that this is even her mom and dad. She goes over the head at times of her real mother. Let me ask you this. I mean, let's be honest. When it comes to this relationship, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Or do you just see darkness and the tunnel just going on and on and on and on and on? To tell you the honest to God truth, it's it's fixable. But it's it's gonna take some time. It's and fixable. We have two. You have you see it as fixable? I see it. As, I, so it it this is mm-hmm. on and on on and on. One day she'll snap back to reality, and the other time she'll she one foot will end up in the church, and she's gone. Listen, one part of me for years. one part of me totally respects your resilience. So when we hear black men ain't shit or black men don't stick with they women, this is a brother who stuck with her for 11 years and loves her still today. And he's struggling with it. So we have to acknowledge and praise this brother for his resilience. But I do also have to warn you, brother. I I could tell you love her. But you're only 35 years old. You still a young man. How long has the marriage been sexless? <laughs> Let me see. My son was born on October 1st. So, October 1st, 2014. So, it's been less Two years? than a year almost. Less than a year. L- less than a year. Okay. Less than a year. It but could it have something to do perfect. with the birth of the child, too. You know, because a lot of times mommies get locked into the babies and the babies need that attention. They need that focus. And mommies are on high alert that first year, two years, three years. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, right, Veronica? Absolutely. So Absolutely. sometimes that's the issue as well. And she has to work her way back to you, work her way back to intimacy with you but this see this is an onion like all of the the issues you are laying out right now are forming the onion of conflict for your relationship you you mentioned mama giving advice you mentioned passa and first lady giving advice now you're mentioning a baby was born a little over a year ago these are layers to the difficulties that you guys are experiencing Yes. Now, my point my point to you is if it's only been a year, give her some more time. Okay? Give her some more time. But it's not silent time. It's do
do the work during the time you're giving her. Right? And what is the work? First and foremost, she cannot be, right? <laughs> she cannot be consulting the church and getting angry, right? When you want to have these conversations. She can't get that. To me, just like my producer just wrote, the three M's. Mama, ministry, and maturity. That's what's maternity, right? But I want to say maturity because you're an immature person if you can't have a conversation, especially with your husband about your wifely duty of making love to him. If you love him. But you know, the birth of a baby shifts things for mamas too. Because you know they ain't never felt no love like the love they have for that child. Am I am, am I saying something incorrect here, Veronica? No, I think. Well, I think it's not just the love. I think it's a question of hormones and overwhelm. I mean, that I too. That when you have a baby, it's 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 people don't tell you like it's an overwhelming state of being. But here's the thing, I think that irregardless. It, again, we have to go back to the needs of the people that are in the in the relationship. And it, at some point, people have got to be able to negotiate with each other to get their needs met. Otherwise, we're not really in a relationship. That's just the truth. It's true. So, if, if, if you can't bring to the table the interference of the pastor, if you can't say, honey, do you not see that... He is a proxy for the decision-making process revolving around our bedroom. Can I bring that to your attention? Right? If you can't do that, honey, without judgment, with, without, with, without condemnation, can we reevaluate his role in our relationship? Should he have a role? Why is his role so entrenched? Why have we given him so much power in the power dynamics that should exist between you and I? Because he's given, because he believes he's getting his instructions from God. So did Joan of Arc. She was called crazy a thousand occasions. Mm. <laughs> Joan of Arc is crazy than a bad shit, but as long as she was winning wars for France, it was good. But even the French called her crazy. How do we verify that his word is coming from God on high? Mm. How has, oh, his, yeah. listen, how has his word benefited our hearts, our relationship, our family? If his word has torn down the intimacy in the family, could that be of God? And if it is of God, to what end would God want to destroy our family for? Can we at least Good ask question. these questions? If it's not in line with the Bible, no. <laughs> but uh, again, though, I, I, I love her. I love her with all my heart. I can tell. I would actually, I will actually die and perish for this woman if anyone were to come across them wrongly of course as an internal problem it's gonna have to do what others my my mother her mother everybody else in our family told us to do i just need to find out some answers for some experts that really know their stuff and i just want to tip my hat off to you and thank god for you your knowledge though your knowledge, Veronica, and my priority right now is to take care of these children. So I don't need some answers. Brother, I want you to email me. I'm going to coach yes, you just straight up on GP. I want you to take down my email, 2319-Z01. Twenty three nineteen zo one at gmail dot com. I want you to email me your name and your number, and I'm gonna call you tomorrow, and we gonna walk through this process. Yes, sir. All right. 
All right, sir. I appreciate Thank you, you sir. for making the call, man. Thank you. Not a problem, sir. Take it easy. Man, that's a cold world. <laughs> That's a cold world. Do you see all the, did, did, did you see the layers? Did you guys peep the layers? Yeah. Sexless marriage, religion, newborn baby, inflexibility, mama. When I say inflexibility, I mean the inability to sit down and have a conversation. Do you guys see the layers? Right. right. I, I, was, I was in those layers. I was married to those layers. And I realized I, it made me insane. Me personally, it made crazy. I had to I had to get out to save my sanity because the layers weren't really real. Children were real, the demands of the day to day were real, but all of that extra 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 uh, in in, my, in our situation it wasn't even real. So I wasn't interacting with a man who was in touch with reality, and that can make a person crazy if you're not in touch with reality. If your partner is not in touch with reality, it can make you crazy, especially as a woman. So. Man. Yeah, I think oof, I don't want to say what I think right now because I might be hella reckless. Ah, it's tough. It's tough to be in that kind of situation. Let me get my homeboy in here real quick because he probably could wrap a nice little taste on it. He got a couple of minutes to do it. Missouri Red, what's happening? What's going on, bro? What's up, Veronica? Hey, Red. What's up, hey, bro? Red. Hey, um, I just want to say much respect and love to Brother Andrew, man. Yes. It's a difficult situation. Yes. Um, as far as the topic and the things relating to the topic, I think a lot of times we have a tendency to, um, especially as men, we're not really connected um, with our balls. Mm. And what I mean by that, that's, you know, you know, I was told by an older, wiser man, uh, many many years ago that that's essentially where our intuition speaks from mm-hmm. as far as male intuition a lot of times we're more connected to our dick than our balls and that has a tendency to get us some of us in trouble say so more about that, that. what's the, what's the difference between being connected to your dick and being connected to your balls give us more context there well, you, you speak of, you know, not just testosterone, but you talk about your masculine power, your true masculine power. Mm-hmm. Most men have a tendency not to be connected to it. So you have a tendency in spaces and places, you'll, you'll ask for sex instead of being in your own power. And it just it's just run to you. You know, those type of men, there's something in them that's lacking in that space. It's like, I'm, I'm connected to my dick. My dick is not my friend. I realized that as a very young man, mm-hmm. but but my balls will always let me know when something is not right with the woman. Just like her being connected to her pussy, right. she has to be connected to her pussy because if she's not, then there's things in between that space that you know could be old past relationships, old past hurts, pains, and things of that nature. It's the same for us, but you know if you're just out there willy nilly and you're not really looking or Participating in finding a woman of higher, you know, a higher vibration, if you will. You're not, you're not really connected to your balls. You're not. You're just not. It's okay, but just realize you get what you get. You get what you are. So that moment of clarity speaks directly to that. Like it's like it's a check-in, if you will. Um, some men have it. Some men don't. It doesn't mean that you can't get it. It's, it's there. It's there for all of us. Mm. Are you really are you really willing to do the work and clear up some of your own garbage, if you will? Wow, that you know it's 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 real, man. Like I don't know, I've I, I've had moments where I was like, I can't believe I did that shit. <laughs> I cannot believe I did that shit. Right. <laughs> you know, especially <laughs> as a younger man, I was like, why the fuck did I do that? Jesus, you know? and, I've had those moments. <laughs> I don't know. Red, as always, man, you come in and you really bring home the show. It's always at the end of the show when you call, too. And we appreciate it, man. Oh, so good, brother, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. You too, brother. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Red. No problem, baby. See, hold on. See. (laughs) See. Motherfuckers' tones and shit be changing. Veronica, I'm I'm jealous, goddammit. 
and, and your tone got to always be sweet as motherfucking candy on Halloween when you talk to me now. See, I get my fucking... I turn on, God damn it. Is it okay, Red? But what the fuck? I don't appreciate none of this shit. <laughs> Hey man, some we've... men just some men just you know some men have that attraction. That's a powerful thing, and so do you, though. I know, but goddamn it, there's a different level of sweet. Like my sweet is C and H. There's some motherfucking <laughs> just regular refined white sugar. This nigga's agave sweet coming off you. He get the honey, the blue agave hookup. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to figure this shit out, Veronica. Goddamn it. <laughs> I, figured, I figured it out I figured it out Man these phone lines is cracking like a mug People are calling in They want to talk about it Man let's just send a, a massive hug And love and respect And just positive energy and light To the brother Andrew And And listen I don't fuck with religion At all But I believe in the power of prayer Everybody should just put some positive energy out towards that brother because he needs it. You heard it. What's love got to do with it? It's a wonderful record. Turn this shit up for a second. Let's get 30 seconds of this. What's love got to do? Got to do it. Who okay, I'm done. <laughs> we be tripping. Hey, I'm sorry. Just wanted to give that brother some love. <laughs> Veronica, where can they find you, honey? Uh, you can find me at blackmastery.com. Yes, blackmastery.com. Uh, I, I, I'm, de- I'm declaring 2016 the year of the Black Master. Uh, we are going to do some major things this year around Black Mastery. So uh, it's time to get yours now. And uh, you can also find me at veronicaconway.com. And on all social media is Veronica Conway. Excellent. Listen, tonight's show was excellent. I'll, I can't wait to hear the replay on this one, goddammit. <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll be back Monday with another new installment of The Voice of Reason on Hot Button Radio, Dash Radio. You guys cannot miss it. The topics are designed to, to ruffle feathers, and I think we did that. We got a lot of callers, but the ladies got to stop being so scary. I have so many female followers who listen to this show, but they don't call in. They might tweet me. I get some DMs, but they won't call in. Right? Call in. What's the sliding in the DMs song? Get, get that record for me real quick. All the ladies be sliding in the DM. It goes down in the DM, right? That's what I'm getting, right? But this is what I want. I want you guys to call in and, and really share. I'll be, I promise I'll be on my best behavior. Tune in Monday. What are we going to talk about Monday? I've got a crazy topic. for. I, I won't reveal it, but, you know, stay close to me. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. All of that stuff. What is that? Did I say Instagram? Did I say Twitter? I said Facebook. Follow me on all of those things. And uh, you guys will be able to catch up with me. Oh, also, buy a copy of my book, The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship, Andrew. I mean, just... Get the book. Read the book with your wife. I really believe that that's an important thing to do. You sit down and you read that book with your wife. You guys may have a different clarity coming. You know, just go to, if you don't have it yet, go to imzowilliams.com, right? And and order it. How to Stick the Landing, right? And the coaching. Oh, yeah, the coaching. Thank you. Thank you. You guys got to get the coaching. You can go to my website. Coaching is there. I'm going to deal with this brother for free, pro bono, because he needs it. And I got love for him. Anyway, it's all good. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys Monday. Deuces!